Hey, what's up and welcome back to my channel. We're doing the weekly astrology energy every week here on YouTube. And this week we're talking about the, technically the first week of October. I'm going to say that. Um, the 2nd through the 9th. October is full of quite challenging energy and it just kicks off right away. Mercury opposite Neptune. This is a transit that makes it hard to delineate what's real in our day-to-day -day and what's real in our more idealistic, imaginative side of things. So this transit alone is sort of putting a fog or a haze over the whole week. It may be really hard to um, understand um, things. Uh, as it is, this is a very sensitive aspect and it weakens our power of interpretation. So as it is not the most ideal time to be signing contracts or making agreements or negotiating finer points um, of those agreements, as well as like on a more interpersonal level to, you know, it's just not going to be the best time to be like finding new people to hang out with or pursuing romantic interests. Although at the end of the week, there is some interesting um, energy going on. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Venus trine node, also Mars opposite node. We see here the divine masculine and the divine feminine aspecting the node. Venus is trine node and Mars is opposite node. So the way I think about this is, you know, as we get organized internally and aligned to our purpose, we are healing the deepest parts of our psyche. And I say that because Lilith is also highlighted here again at the end of the week. Lilith moves into Virgo, Mercury's moving into Libra, Venus moves into Virgo. This Libra energy is going to be very beneficial for us this week because we need to prioritize compassion, harmony, grace in order to get through this murky period. What Mars is doing then is asking us to channel our action orientation and our desire our desire to take action and how we look at the objects of our desire, right? Because Venus again. And to channel that productively because as it is, it's not going to be a very uh, clear week. This astrological weather for this week is just plain cloudy. I don't know if there's any other way I can. <laughs> there's actually many ways I could say that. Um, so I wrote here, you know, look out for defensiveness. It's hiding your personal areas of growth. If there's anything triggering for you this week, definitely um, some, some things may come up. Understand the root of your desires, intentions, and actions. If things are unclear, if it seems hard to communicate with people, here's like situations that could happen this week is like everyone's experiencing the same thing or is told the same thing but interprets different things. Or it's like our idealized mind, our imaginative side of us, the one that is, um, if you're into IMBT uh, personality tests or whatever they're called, there's one factor that is uh, judging versus perceptive. We are less perceptive this week, as in taking things for face value. We're judgmental. I think that we're filling in... It's, our, it's totally natural for our brains to just fill in the empty gaps in our knowledge. Um, but that can mean that it's like a game of telephone. We're receiving sort of different messages. Um, I do want to say that this does make it a good time for reflecting um, inwardly, especially, I already mentioned, understanding the root of your desires, intentions, and actions. But a time to trust your intuition and let go of control at the end of the week, we have Venus moving into Virgo at the same time conjunct Lilith. Remember, Lilith is like this wild, <laughs> she's a wild card, but it, she, she's, she represents the divine feminine and usually things that are repressed within us, things that need to be acknowledged. So it's almost like Lilith is coming for like a one, two, you know, uh, coming from behind. Um... <laughs> She does represent some intense sexual energy coming in at the end of the week. This is a chance to increase your psychic awareness, yes. 
Watch out for explosiveness or, explosiveness or confrontations, okay? But, or I'll say, and working with the sacral energy this week and this weekend is going to be especially uh, auspicious, as in helpful, if um, that's something you're into, um, such as sex magic and other things. So um, there's definitely been some more interesting things going on in the realms of like energy healing. Uh, using the sacral energy there so if it interests you um, definitely take a look around like meetup sites and and see what what people are doing and what you can participate in the last thing I'll say is you know reiterating this Mars square Pluto energy this explosiveness and confrontations I think you know just taking it slowly I was getting this fogged in message um, last week even and it was at first really confusing to me because we're in the full moon Aries energy right now. And this tension then is, is palpable because the Aries is about breaking through. It's about divisiveness. It's breaking through, growing, action. And so this fogged in element, knowing that it's this week primarily, but you know, for you personally, there could be other things going on and maybe that's what I was picking up in other people's readings uh, last week or just an early onset, right? Is um, this, this dynamic is palpable that we're so fogged in that something has, you know, something's gonna come in and, and clear the air quite literally. So I don't know what that's about, but it could be anything. I hope that the energy reading is helpful to you just to get an idea of what the astrological weather conditions are like this week. I know it always helps me. This is why I do this. I started this channel primarily as a way to self-study um, and to practice and as a form of discipline so that I am looking each week at what is going on. It's also very helpful in my private readings. So if you're interested in that, you can probably find a way to get a hold of me. Let's go into our, t our tarot and see what tarot has to say. This is a reading for the collective. And it's the beginning of the month, so you already know I have the Illuminated Love Oracle deck on standby. The month of October's card is Deep Listening. Such a beautiful card, beautiful artwork. And this looks almost like a trumpet, like of an uh, elephant. So I'm getting, you know, feelings of intuition here as well. Deep Listening says, rest in silence. As you rest into the vast silence and spaciousness within, a great wisdom resounds. Now is the time to listen to your intuitive knowing. Yeah, okay. Sitting in devotion, allow yourself to receive and vibrate as the impulse of creation, for the quiet whisperings of the beloved are here to inform and guide you into a deeper relationship with self. The emergence of this new way of being informs heart, mind, and body to the ever-present inherent wisdom within. Okay, there's actually an illuminated practice here, so why don't we do that at the end of the video? Stick around and we'll do this illuminated practice. So the month of October, deep listening, a time for being quiet, um, intuitive knowing came up, that makes sense. This is, these, these are cards I pulled, by the way, f at the beginning of the year for the whole year in advance. Sitting in devotion, so meditation, prayer, Receive and vibrate as the impulse of creation. The emergence of this new way of being informs heart, mind, and body. So this really feels like sort of that end of the week energy of like wanting to break through some inner wisdom for us. And, you know, I think it's coming from this, this, these Lilith transits as, as much as they are the North Node. Nodes are our purpose. North Node is sort of what we're here to learn and accomplish. Lilith um, then is more karmic, so South Node-ish because karmic in the sense that she's here to show us where we don't give ourselves enough credit, where we repress parts of ourselves, what needs to be broken free to be whole. All right. I also have the Sacred Traveler Oracle deck by Denise Lynn. 
I've been using this deck a lot lately. Let's just see where we go. Thanks for being here. I love coming to sit each week and make these videos. Grounding. Go deep, explore your roots. Yep. Not a time to be putting yourself out there so much. We did just finish the full moon, and so we have about another, you know, ish week until the first quarter where we're integrating, grounding ourselves, we're integrating everything that we've learned, we're letting the dust settle. And just see where we are. Grounding. Go deep and explore your roots. Lilith. Lilith. This could vibe like you know, looking at your your history and your background. Um, I'm getting hits of like, you know, somebody looking at their past relationships and asking why they failed and finding commonalities or something like that. You may be looking at the commonalities or the common denominators of a repeating thing in your life. Okay. Anything else? The card also very much looks like what the outside here in the, in the Midwest does and will look like for this next season. So maybe you're finding a chance to get out into nature. I think that'll be time very well spent. There's this woman um, sitting at the base of a tree in front of a river. This looks very much like a forest by my neighborhood, actually. If you know, you know. Okay. And now for the tarot. That almost didn't want to cut. Of course, seven of cups in reverse. There's that Neptunian energy, confusion, fog, but then we also have the Fool and the Ace of Cups underneath. And look at that, Eight of Cups. I actually see a lot of things pointing to sort of um, working on yourself, um, working on your self-confidence. Um, uh, that's the Nine of Pentacles, so we're going Eight, Nine, and then the World Closure. So it's not that something is ending, it's actually um, that something has um, not been put to rest. Something hasn't been put to rest. It could have to do with love. It could have to do with something. The fool. The, the fool says, you know, this is a new journey. This is your soul. So I feel like instead of this being actually a new thing, I, I feel like this is something, you're, we're exploring our roots. So we're exploring ways like how did this make, how is my soul made? The fool represents the soul of the tarot. What do I love? What do I truly desire? And how does that shape my day-to-day -day life? You see that? So we're working on ourselves, specifically our self-confidence. Um, this is, I take this as a confidence card. I also take this as a card of like, uh, you know, um, I don't have what I want. Like I have, like, um, how do I say this? Wanting more, desiring more. It's like you're willing to put the work in, but you're wondering if it would lead to the thing that you most desire. This almost feels like sort of trying to jump some sort of gap from here to there. Trying to get over there. I've been over here, I'm trying to get over there. This makes sense. Why we're exploring this week, this idea of um, how have my desires and intentions resulted in my reality? We had this lesson a few weeks back. I can't remember when it was, but the idea that we need to really be conscious of when we're making unconscious decisions that are leading us actually further away from the thing that we want, whether it's because we in the moment needed to take the easier route or there, a different priority came up. Ultimately, we have to take responsibility for those decisions um, that have produced a certain result in our life, okay? So I'm also picking up on some sort of Taurus energy here. Taurus rules the s s second house of 
the what we value and our self-worth there. So let's see what's what will come up some more. Page of Cups, right out the gate. Page of Cups is about expecting the unexpected, asking questions, be curious. Be curious. Seven of Wands, I mean Seven of Swords. Okay, this is indicative of some manipulation here. Queen of Wands. Okay, I'm not really sure how to interpret that at face value, so let's just keep going. Two of Pentacles, the tower in the middle, in reverse, resisting some sort of change. Three of Cups. What's on the other side of this is, is celebration, so let's see what, else, what it can tell us about that journey. There's the Seven of Wands. We've got two Sevens now. Three of Swords in the reverse. And the Eight of Wands. So yeah, there's definitely examples here of slowing down. We end the car, the reading with the card, the Eight of Wands. So a bit of stagnation, just a bit of um, needing to be a little bit more strategic in how you're using your power. Um, some of you might be um, helping other people or doing things that aren't really serving your best interest. Um, not that there's like foul play showing up here, but it just sort of seems like you're spending as if there was no limit. And the, the actual limit then is the progress on what you're able to achieve and how your resources are fueling uh, your desires and your dreams. If we're exploring our roots, it's worth mentioning that the tower is, is, is a period of time where everything falls apart and you're left with the foundation of something. And so I feel that either this has happened for you or is happening for you, like it has already happened. And there's just some resistance in using this as an opportunity. Um, as it is, some people might, you might be feeling that um, you need to be in a state of self-preservation. Um, and really what Spirit wants us to do this week is let go. You know, the Seven of Wands in reverse when I see it. It's about letting go in the Three of Swords. Letting go of past heartbreak, past, um, just past hurts in general. There's something that has been deeply influential and not in a good way, something that has either created some sort of condition where you need to, where you feel you need to protect yourself. <laughs> and so in order to avoid deeper feelings and looking deeper into what those situations had been in the past and how they affected you, it seems like you're keeping busy. Um, you're just staying busy saying, hey, everything's good, everything's fine. This is the busy card, all right? It is a card of ultimately choose your priorities. Is there, so, is there something you still wish to know about and are curious about? Why aren't you in this energy of newness, you know, the soul of your tarot? To return to your soul really means to reclaim your desires. Has there been a page of wands energy? This is where we are. We're not the king, we're the page. So we have a long journey still ahead. And a good thing to be doing right now is to be asking more questions and to be, you know, embodying this inner child. Now, the page of cups can also be a bit um, emotionally irrational, like sort of. Uh, playful, um, not, not exactly the best energy for taking things seriously. And I think that actually helps us this week. We do want to keep things kind of light, but also understand that everything that is produced in our life is a condition of our observing it, interacting with it energetically, physically, mentally, emotionally. So what is this that wants to be let go of? I feel like spirit is creating spirit and universe has created an opportunity for us to sit with any feelings of discomfort so that we can release them. 
release them into the ground. This is why we have our grounding card. So as it is, I see this as a very powerful week for healing. It may be difficult to get on um, with day-to-day -day matters when we're, um, especially if you find yourself very much in your thoughts and in your in your mind as things are pretty foggy and hazy. If you can put off making decisions, I would. Um, things are not exactly what they seem. Okay, so this transit, by the way, lasts um, until about midweek. So by the end of the week, this fogginess may may go away. But as it is, October overall is a bit. Um, I don't want to say unpredictable because here we are like sort of predicting what it might be like it, it's going to be highs and lows okay so with this queen of wands in reverse here she's the closest card uh, to me that connects with the weekend's energy of using the sacral energy so this is what it means to connect with your desires as well as you know this is a reminder to tell you about how the energy system of the body works everything is f foundational on the root chakra the bottom chakra it's red and that's where we do our grounding from the next stage up is the sacral chakra you cannot work with sacral energy unless in your root you feel grounded you feel secure you know you are safe the sacral then comes in as our power of creation. Where is your fire leading you? What does it ask you to explore? Page of Wands. Are you following those instincts? Your soul's job as a human is to engage and interact with what's around you. Then comes identity, right? This the solar plexus, and then we move up and up. I'm not going to get into all of that. I just wanted to illustrate how those two energies are working together and how you must work with them in order to be effective. The opposite can also be true. Maybe you have an overactive, overactive root chakra or overactive sacral chakra means you know, in the root, that could be seen as over-controlling because if you're the type of person who, when they don't know something, that you try to, like, grasp even more to try to create understanding, um, I don't know that that's going to serve you very well this week. <laughs> as well as with the sacral chakra, you know, I'd start, and that energy along with this week, I start to think of, like, dominance, like, wanting to... Um, this this like idea of power struggles can be real like um, when it comes to matters of love or partnership for example a very dominating partner who's like do this you know look this way just somebody who sort of like has has those qualities or at the very least it's sort of sacral energy can become obsessive okay so just be aware of where you are overactive chakras, underactive chakras, this Libra at time, um, as well as Venus moving into Libra, is going to be very helpful for us to find that kind of balance. Ultimately, right, it's, this is the whole balance, this is the whole axis, the Aries-Libra axis that we're going to be experiencing for the next 18 months, or however long it is. I'm actually going to look it up and tell you, but it's easy enough to find this Aries Libra axis, balance between what supports us and our personal growth and development, as well as how do we get on with others? How do our desires and intentions not only affect and produce things in our life, but how are we treating our desires and our intentions in the context of other people? Mm, sharing enough or oversharing? You know, <laughs> I could go on and on about this, but it does get, you know, kind of uh, old at some point just talking into a camera. So uh, if you want to come and see me do an event, just go join my meetup and you can learn all about the events that I'm doing virtual and in person. I want to thank you so much for being here. I'm going to leave this reading just where it's at.
and I hope that it helps. Thank you so much for being here. Take care. Don't think that I almost forgot. We're gonna do this deep listening exercise. Um, it's in the handbook, the guidebook for the Illuminated Love Oracle. I absolutely love this deck. It's so beautiful, created by three sisters. So, this is gonna be a very brief meditation that I will guide you through. So if you wanna close your eyes and just take a few deep breaths, let us begin. Inseparable from source, resting in the vast, silent spaciousness, great wisdom resounds. Now is a moment to listen. Through devotion, I enter the sacred space of the heart where the vibration of creation resides. I sit and allow. I receive the vibration of the sacred sound current of the universe, awakening intuitive knowing, moving through and as me. The quiet whisperings of the beloved are here, informing and guiding me into a deeper knowing of self. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next week. Good luck.